Thank you. All right. When we left Jacob last week, he received the blessings of his father Isaac, and he began to travel to Haran in the northeast of Israel. In sharp contrast to Abraham's servant Eliezer, Jacob does not travel with servants or a caravan of camels loaded with gifts, but he leaves as a man with seemingly nothing. Just as Moses set out from Egypt, Jacob is alone with only the clothes on his back. He will never see his mother again. His brother has vowed to kill him. There are no servants to defend him. He never had to hunt like his brother. He was used to living in tents. Now he was destitute and alone. It would seem that Jacob was homeless and hopeless. In verse 11 of Genesis 28, it says Jacob lodged there. In Hebrew, it simply says, Weyalin, or he stayed all night. In all likelihood, Jacob had nothing to eat, no shelter to protect him, and no place to lay his head. So he used the stone to rest his head. Years ago, I too left my life in California with only a backpack and the clothes on my body. It was not a pleasure trip. I could have flown to the East Coast or taken a bus or a train. I did it because I was broken. My dreams I had had since childhood were broken and I was living a meaningless life. I wanted to discover who I was and if life was more than just earning a paycheck. So I told everyone goodbye. I ended a relationship and I quit a job and started walking. I know what it's like to walk for miles with no food, no weapons and no shelter. It was unthinkable then and it's unthinkable today and extremely dangerous. I crossed from California to Ohio with only the determination of my spirit and my faith in an unseen God who I barely knew back then. You see, back then, I too saw God as the God of my mother because even though I saw him and saw his protections and deliverance, I just did not have a relationship with him. Some of us are in our homes today, comfortable at night, with food to eat, and a roof over our heads. And yet, we are as destitute as Jacob. We feel it in our hearts. We go about our days smiling and saying the right things when people ask us, how are you? But in quiet moments, we are not so strong. Like Jacob, we have the promises of a blessing. We know that there's the promise of eternal life or a body that is incorruptible, made of spirit. Yet today, we feel a kind of numb pain. For some, the pain of an unbearable loss or impending loss. For some, there's a sadness you feel when you reach across the bed and realize that person is no longer there. For others, there is physical pain we hide. Yes, we walk upright and we lift our heads high, but the pain is still there when we roll out of bed in the morning or when we roll to the side at night. And for a few, we need help just to be able to stand. For others, there's the anguish of unsettled minds. Maybe it's a marriage or a failed marriage or a child who is struggling or a family member who is angry. Sometimes family members say hurtful things to one another and even to you. Some family members think, why are you in that weird religion? Yes, Hashem knows when your heart rate speeds up. He hears when the family members talk badly to one another. Yeshua said he knows the number of hairs on your head. Don't you think he knows when the hairs on your skin rise or when your face flushes in anger? He knows you want to say something, to do something, to do anything but he also sees when you struggle to maintain composure and perhaps sometimes lose it. That night in the cool air of what will become Beit El in the West Bank, Jacob sat and watched as the sun set. There was a small town nearby, 
but he dared not go unarmed into a Canaanite area. He was probably no longer hungry because when you fast, there is a, a calmness of body that happens after the first day. But his mind must have been racing. He remembered the cries of his brother filling the camp when he realized he had lost his father's blessing. He probably could feel the warmth of his mother's breath in the cool evening air on his face, her voice close to his face, telling him, here, your brother Esau is comforting himself over you by planning to kill you. Therefore, my son, listen to me. Get up and escape to Laban, my brother, in Haran. Stay with him a little while until your brother's anger subsides. Your brother's anger will turn away from you, and he will forget what you did to him. Then I'll send and bring you back from there. Why should I lose both of you on the same day? Genesis 27, 42 through 45. As he fell asleep, Jacob probably remembered his mother's voice say to him, Then I'll send and bring you back from there. It would be the last words he would ever hear from her. Tired and lonely, Jacob fell asleep. It's when we are tired and feel defeated and deep sadness overwhelms us that Hashem comforts us. He feels the tears well up in our eyes. He feels the trembling in our bodies. And then there is a sigh and finally sleep comes and we rest. Adonai reached out to Jacob that night from the heavens. He revealed himself and he sought to have a relationship with Jacob, with the man who would become the father of his chosen people. In his dream, Jacob sees Olam, I'm sorry, Jacob sees Ulam, a word which appears only once in all of scripture. Most of the time it's translated as a ladder but it really means an ascending set of stones or a staircase. Angels are seen ascending and descending from the top of this ulam. Jacob hears the voice of his God, the God of his father Isaac, for the very first time in his life. Hinehi, Hinehi. Adonai was standing on top of it, and he's heard. I'm sorry, Adonai was standing on top of it, and he said, I am Adonai, the God of your father, Abraham, the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give it to you and to your seed. Your seed will be as the dust of the land, and you will burst forth to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And, you, and in you, all the families of earth will be blessed. And in your seed, behold, I am with you. And I will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land for I will not forsake you until I have done what I promised. Genesis 28, 13 through 15. Those promises Adonai gave to Jacob transcend time. They not only gave him a hope that he would retain the rest of his life, but they should also be the hope of the children of Israel today. Not only in Israel, but they are sure promises. No evil plans can take them away. They are also promises to those scattered in the nations. Because he said, I will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land, but I will not forsake you until I have done what I promised you. This was no simple promise to only Jacob, but to his seed, which would burst forth to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south, well beyond the borders of Israel. But let us step back from this story for a few moments. What is the significance of the Ulam, the staircase with the angels going up and coming down? Why is Jacob at the front of the staircase, I'm sorry, at the foot of the staircase, or as you will, a ladder? Remember Adonai said, and in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed, and in your seed? 
As Messianic believers, we know that the seed of promise was also a son who would bridge the gap between man and God, Messiah Yeshua. One part of the blessing is also Jacob's children. We often overlook that. The children of Israel are destined to become a blessing to all the families of the earth. But what do we see today? We see the world is divided against the house of Judah. Some, fam some families actually celebrate when Judah is suffering. And yet, it is Judah that has preserved the words of the Torah. And the Torah is actually the root of Judaism, but also the root of Christianity. And whether you'll accept it or not, it's also the root of Islam. Without the Torah, the world would not know Abraham or Ibrahim. Without Moses or Musa or Yeshua or Isa, the world would be worshiping elemental gods of stone and wood. Yet, beyond the Torah, the children of Israel have yet another commission. As teachers, as priests, teaching the nations the ways of Adonai at the time of the restoration of the earth. This is a constant message Adonai delivers in the books of the prophets. Let me read a few for you. In Isaiah uh, chapter 2, it says, It will come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Adonai's house will stand firm as the head of the mountains and will be exalted above the hills, so all nations will flow to it. Then many peoples will go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Adonai, to the house of the God of Jacob. Then he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. But Torah will go forth from Zion, and the word of Adonai from Jerusalem. And the prophet Micah delivers the exact same message from Adonai. He delivers the same words used in Isaiah. But at the end of days, the mountain of Adonai's house will be established as chief of the mountains and will be raised above the hills. People will flow to it. Then many nations will go and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of Adonai, to the house of the God of Jacob. Then he will direct us in his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For Torah will go forth from Zion, and the word of Adonai from Jerusalem. That's in Micah 4, verses 1 through 4. So who will be this priestly class of teachers on that holy mountain? For in my holy mountain, Israel's high mountain, it is a declaration of Adonai. There the whole house of Israel, all of them, will serve me in the land. Just in case you didn't catch what Hashem said, let me say it more clearly. Well, let me say it. Repeat it. All of them, the whole house of Israel, not some of them, the whole house, there I will take pleasure in them. There I will receive your offerings, the first of your gifts, with all your holy things. With your sweet aroma, I will accept you when I bring you out from the peoples and gather you from the countries where you have been scattered. And I will be sanctified in you in the sight of the nations. Ezekiel 20, 40-41. Zechariah has a message for Judah today, fighting in the tunnels to free the captives, and also to the children of Israel standing with them today. It will happen that just as you were a curse among the nations, house of Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you and you will be a blessing. Fear not, let your hands be strong. Zechariah 8, 13. Fear not, let your hands be strong. Zechariah goes on to say in the future, in the days after the day of the Lord. Thus says Adonai Sabu, peoples and the inhabitants of many cities will again come. The inhabitants of one city will go to another saying, let us go to entreat the favor of Adonai and to seek Adonai Sabu. I also am going. Indeed, many peoples and powerful nations will come to seek Adonai Sabu in Jerusalem. 
and to entreat the favor of Adonai. Thus says Adonai Savoah, in those days I will come, it will come to pass that ten men from every language of the nations will grasp the corners of the garment of a Jew, saying, Let us go up with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Zechariah 8, 20 through 23. In the beginning of this reading, Jacob left his father's house with nothing. No servants, no animals, no wealth. In a dream, he encounters angels coming from the earth and going up to the heavens and going back down to the earth. At the end of this reading, Jacob leaves his father-in-law's house and he reversed his path triumphantly. He has now amassed great wealth, four wives, 12 boys and a daughter. All are very young at the beginning of their lives and he has servants and animals. This time he encounters angels again, but not in a dream or a vision, but standing on the earth. Just as in the days after the flood, the people sought to build a tower to reach up to God in the heavens. So Adonai reached out to the people of earth to build a bridge from heaven to men, to build for himself a nation, a people, a family. Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, was the Ulam, a prototype of Messiah Yeshua, whose name stood for wrestling with God. He was a prototype of Yeshua and his sons were the beginning of a new nation. What was begun with men and women, the literal children of Israel, and all those grafted into the family later, the people we are today, all the suffering, the despair, the heartbreak, and even death itself, these are only the beginnings of the commission of the work that Adonai has planned for us plan for the children of Israel. But to do the work Adonai has prepared for us, we must be remade in Messiah's image. We, like Jacob, need to reach the place where we are broken, tired, tired of trying to do it our way, overwhelmed by our weaknesses, trembling for a true relationship with our Creator, our Father. That is when we'll be comforted. We too will retrace our steps, just as Jacob did. We will come back to this place, but this time with angels, as a family, as a nation, all born again in the beginning of a new life, not as a ladder of stone made by human hands, but as Ulam, the bridge between heaven and earth. But until that time, let me remind you, all of you who out there are suffering one way or another, just as Jacob did in Laban's house for 20 years, I encourage you to humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that he may lift you up at the appropriate time. A message from 1 Peter 5, 6. But let your hands be strong. After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you into his eternal glory in Messiah, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. 1 Peter 5.10 For God himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Sure promises. Also mentioned in Hebrews 13.5 Though the mountains depart and the hills be shaken, my love will not depart from you nor will my covenant of peace be shaken, says Adonai, who has compassion on you. Those words were written in Isaiah 54, 10. Yes, we may be tired. We may have aches and deal with pains and diseases that just won't go away. We may have lost loved ones. Our marriages may have their moments. Our families sometimes feel like wrestling matches, but we have something and someone who cannot be broken. 
we have the promises that even death cannot separate us from Messiah Yeshua. And through him, we have the promise of eternal life. And in an eternal family, in the household of the eternal Elohim. And the family of Israel is the firstborn of many nations. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.